Hello my friends, what's up and welcome to today's video. Today we're going to do a eyeshadow palette extravaganza. It's been a couple of months since I've done one of these. I mean primarily because the makeup releases had kind of slowed down. I hadn't purchased as much in the way of eyeshadow palettes, but the month of June was a little different. So if you aren't aware or if you are new to my channel, eyeshadow palettes are my favorite thing to buy as far as just makeup in general. Granted, I do love a whole lot of other things like highlighters and things like that, but for whatever reason, eyeshadow palettes have always been my number one go-to. And so June, I kind of fell off the wagon a little bit and I bought 10. Now granted, one was a set of three, but I still bought 10 eyeshadow palettes. Anyways, I wanna go through with you what I picked up and give you a little bit of a review, just kind of a mini review on each of these. Um, and that way, if you've had your eye on any one of these, you kind of know whether it'd be right for you. So if you're interested in seeing which palettes I picked up for the month of June and which ones I loved and maybe which ones I didn't, then just keep on watching. All right, so the first two I'm gonna start with are the, I guess, oldest ones. And what I mean by that is when before quarantine, before everything shut down, um, I had placed a ColourPop order, like literally two or three days before everything started shutting down. And during the month of June, at the very start of June, I finally got that order in. I can't even tell you how, I, how excited I was. Anyways, so we're gonna start with those because technically I got them, they arrived in the month of June. I did get the Mulan palette as well well as the Making Moves palette. Um, so this is very similar. The Making Moves palette is very similar to their Bloom, uh, the Nude, Nude something. Why can't, Blush Crush and Nude Mood? That, those are the ones. <laughs> this is kind of similar to that, only this is a mauve type of color scheme. Um, and as per usual, you guys already know this, the standout shades are my very favorites. This palette was no exception. Those are amazing. They're just awesome. They're very, very metallic. They're very pigmented. I love to use them. I'm just going to tell you that the mattes I found to be more powdery than usual for ColourPop eyeshadows. Typically, they perform really amazingly, and these were a little bit more dusty, a little chalkier. I mean, it was a little bit of a I kind of was surprised just because I expected it to be exactly like all of their others. Not to say that this is a bad palette, it's just I was surprised at the, I guess at the performance of the mattes. I just wasn't as crazy about them as I usually am, but I did pick this one up, or I guess, let me rephrase, it did come in. And then as far as the Mulan palette, it is absolutely beautiful. You've probably seen a million and one reviews right now, or by now, so you kind of don't need mine, but it's very, very pretty, very detailed. I love what ColourPop's been doing with their packaging. I think they're just very, they, they continue to amaze me with the quality they put out, and the price point. Um, the palette I just showed you, that one is a very exception to the rule. Maybe I just got a bad one, I don't know. But this palette is very, very beautiful and performs the way I would expect it to perform. I will say there's a lot of shades that I probably won't reach for, but overall it is a beautiful palette. These sparkly shades are incredible. This gold is so amazing. When it first came in, I was like, I cannot believe that this is just as inexpensive as it is. It's so, so pretty and it's something that you would find like in a high-end eyeshadow palette. This was totally worth the money and if they restock, if and when they restock, I would highly suggest picking that one up. I want to say that one was 20. The Making Moves, I think, was 14. So let's move on. Let's just stay in the on the topic of ColourPop. So I picked up ColourPop's newest release, which took me by surprise. I was so excited to finally see that back in my feed. ColourPop has a new release because we're used to seeing that like on a weekly or bi-weekly basis. So this is the tie-dye collection. Technically it's called Cloud Dye. I did um, get on the site in time to pick up the little vault, which ended up being the same price as if I would have picked them up individually, but it does come in a little vault type of packaging. The little sleeve is very cute and everyone knows tie-dye is in right now. I've never really been a fan of like the tie-dye clothing. I will say the more I see it, the more it's grown on me, but I've just really never been the one to go out and buy tie-dye clothing. Um, but I love pastels and things like that. So colors like that. So this was right up my alley. It does come like this. And again, you've probably seen this left and right, but it has the green, the blue, purple, and then the peach 
shades or the peach palette. Um, and these are so, so nice. I will say though that I'm seeing a lot of people, because I love watching reviews once I've gotten my product in. I just kind of like watching and seeing what other people are finding. And I have found that people will put these pastel mattes on their eyes with no white base underneath and they look so vibrant, so intense. And when I do it, I don't get as much of the intensity as they're getting. So I'm not sure. I obviously get the intensity if I use a white base, like my ColourPop white concealer, which is my go-to for using, you know, a stark white base. That or the NYX um, eye crayon in Milk. But I don't know, for some reason, some of these, like I still have the little foam thingy in here. Some of these are just not appearing as vibrant on me without using a base. And I just, I don't know, I don't know. But they are very, very pretty. And quite frankly, I've always had that experience with pastels. I mean, look, you can tell, but it's very, very faint. I don't know, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. But pastels, I typically expect for them to be a little bit more on the faint side, side and need a little bit more help, um, but other people don't seem to be in that same boat. Um, let me give you a quick up close of the peach one. I don't own the Baby Got Peach palette, so I didn't really have that to compare to. Um, there's not many ColourPop palettes I don't own. Um, I, there's probably a lot I don't own, but as far as those kind of monochromatic type of palettes, there's not a lot. And so, but that's, that just happens to be one of the ones that, that I don't own. But anyways, so... Yeah, see, just kind of faint. Anyways, but typically I am happy with the price point because these kinds of stand out shades, again, those are the ones that I really go for and I love them. They're very intense, very pigmented and very metallic. Really, really pretty. Anyways, so I picked that up and I wanna say it was $36 because each of these are 12. Um, and like I said, the only difference is that it comes in the little vault packaging. So that is that with ColourPop. Let's move on to, uh, let's see. Okay, let's go on to Morphe. So as I have all this powder over here, okay. So the first Morphe palette, there were two releases in the month of June by Morphe and typically I'm not the one to jump on the bandwagon for like first day of release. It really has to call my name when I see them like in promo pics um, for me to pick it up and typically I will wait till it comes to Ulta because it, I feel like it's a little bit more flexible when it comes to the return policy. Not that Morphe is not, but I have had bad experiences at my local standalone store um, with the manager being very rude um, when I was returning and because I didn't do an exchange, I was just like, no, I'm gonna return it, I don't like it. I can't even tell you. Anyways, so I pretty much, at that point, I knew my frequency in the Morphe store would be very seldom. And this was one of the times that I went into the Morphe store. I mean, for Coca-Cola, I'll do it. Um, but I did go into the Morphe store because I was kind of, I got kind of anxious. Um, I went at a time when I knew the mall would be kind of bare because I'm not looking to be in crowded places right now. Um, and it was. So I did pick this one up. I think it was $22. I did do a video of this one, not a review, just like a let's put this on my eye kind of video. And um, yeah, so I mean, honestly, I was drawn in because of Coke. I am a Coke girl. If I am drinking soda, it's going to be Coke. Now, granted, I don't drink soda all the time. It's just not good for you. But the times I do drink soda, I drink Coke and we do buy it. We have it in the house. I know a lot of people don't want to buy it because then they'll drink it. We do buy it, um, but I don't feel the need to drink it every day. And we buy the little mini cans. The big ones are just so large. It's too much sugar for one sitting. And so we buy the little mini cans. Um, but anyways, so this is what it looks like. I wish they would have done something different with the cover um, instead of the black and red, just kind of all over the place, just like kind of like the box of which I've thrown out, but the Coca-Cola box, um, which, Maybe you're asking, Michelle, we know you and you are a packaging type of girl. Why'd you throw away the box if it's different from the palette? Well, let me tell you, <laughs> it's got a ton of bubble wrap inside. If you're familiar with Morphe packaging, it can be very bulky. I don't know, something about it that I just wasn't a fan. It's actually still in the recycling bin downstairs. 
So if I change my mind, I can go grab it. But I don't know, there's something, it just wasn't calling to me to keep it. But anyways, so it totally contradicts anything I ever tell you about me being a sucker for packaging. But this is the cardboard packaging. It does have a mirror on the inside. The shade names are on a plastic little sleeve or cover, whatever you wanna call it. So definitely not ideal. This is what it looks like. Now it is a very neutral themed palette and Coke is brown. So, I mean, I did anticipate some of that. I anticipated it to look like this cause I had seen the promo pictures, but like I said, it's Coke. I was like, that already sold me. And I knew I kind of wanted to because of like the reds and stuff. It's got some beautiful shades, don't get me wrong. The reds don't last red, um, at least on my skin tone, within the matter of five minutes. They have turned literally pink. You wouldn't detect any kind of red. Like, they turn fuchsia pink. So that was a little bit like, dang, you know, I want it to stay that Coke red, that iconic color. Um, the glitters are very pretty. If you don't like pressed glitters, know that it comes with two in here. Um, but it performs on par, I guess, with a Morphe eyeshadow palette. Nothing sensational, but also not a bad palette. It's got a couple of these topper duochromes that are actually very pretty. And if you've seen that video, you know I um, put up pictures of these um, eyeshadows on my husband's skin tone. And they pop. They look so, so pretty and they don't pop as well on me, but that's okay. Um, but let me see if I can, where can I give you swatches of these? You, see, you're not even going to be able to, to tell. They're very sheer. They're those topper types of shades that I tell you are toppers and nothing more. They don't walk that line of being a topper yet a standalone shade. Um, but anyways, so definitely not the best eyeshadow palette of life. I think it's on par with Morphe shadows, um, which again, I think is kind of average, but it was $22 and I wanted to get my hands on some Coke makeup type thing. So that's what we've got going on here. So I did pick that one up and then as far as the next Morphe palette, I got to tell you, this next palette, I'm looking at my Morphe palettes right now to see if anything else strikes me. I really do love the Jaclyn Hill 2 palette. That's really been my top Morphe palette. Honestly, y'all, I think this is my favorite Morphe palette of life. I'm not even joking. It's what I'm wearing on my eyes today. Um, I have done a video with this palette, which um, probably will go up before this video goes up, but it's the Maddie Ziegler palette. I love this palette so much. Like this, it's real with this palette. This is a good palette. So the thing about this palette is it's above average for Morphe. It's not your average Morphe palette. The quality is so much better. Let me wipe down my arm so that I can give you some swatches. The quality is, I didn't expect it to be this good. I really did think it was going to be an average Morphe palette, um, just, you know, in pretty shades. Uh, but I, ca I can't describe to you how much fun I have had using this palette. Um, so first off, the detail is incredible. So the, the packaging, the cover is very, very pretty. I don't know if you're going to be able to see, I hope so. The lighting's changing a little bit because I'm putting this, let's do this. Do you see like the lips with like the flowers coming down from the lips? Like there is just a lot of detail that I'm like, I love this. I will tell you it's made in China, but I think I have found that most Morphe palettes are made in China. I say that just because I don't know if that makes a difference to you. Um, it does include a mirror. The shade names are on the actual palette, which is so, so nice. And this palette just draws me in every single time. So the thing about it is it's easy to do something so easy. It's easy to do something easy but complex looking they're very very pretty there are a few shades that i don't think would work for deeper skin tones they don't even work on my skin tone like this maddie girl shade um they're pretty but they i'm like mm, you know <laughs> i put them on my skin tone and i'm like i don't i don't really see much to them um i will show that to you here in a second um these so everyone wants to do these types of shades and these aren't my favorite it's like a pink gold shift type shade and I'm just not a fan. I feel like they end up looking very powdery. This one is no exception. So you see how light they are. You can barely see those on my skin tone. And then this is that pink type of shade. If you are into Pat McGrath and you have the highlighter palette or you have, let's just say the Divine Rose one palette, that white looking shade that leans pink, 
I'm not a fan of those types of shades. And, and this, this one is very much like that. And I just noticed when I put my palette down, I gouged one of the prettiest shades. No, I don't even know how that happened. Okay, anyways, moving on. These shades right here, these pastel shades, they are so vibrant. This is like what I had hoped the ColourPop ones to be. I don't have to put like a stark white base to get those to really show up. They are so, so pretty. I'm wearing the yellow on the inner portion of my lid and I'm really surprised at how pigmented this yellow is. Now, it's probably not as vibrant once you put it on your skin as it is in the pan. I don't think I've ever found a yellow to be like, wow, this is sunflower yellow on my eye. Yellows, I guess, are just hard. They end up looking a little faded, but this is the best yellow I have used on my skin. Let's say that. These just, these shades, they, I don't know. They are so dreamy. They go on, they build up so nicely. They're very effortless in their blend. And I just, I love them. I love that there's like little imprints on these pans. This one has an eye, this one has a lips. But look how pretty that is. So, so nice. I just, I'm so in love with this palette, you guys, if you couldn't already tell. This Dancing Queen is probably my favorite shade out of all of them and is one of the reasons, one of the main reasons that I wanted to pick this palette up. I've, I've been wanting a good metallic Barbie pink. Now granted, I feel like I've got a couple of them in my Anastasia um, palettes, like the um, Omrezi palette. And then I feel like there was another one. Riviera maybe? I don't know. Omrezi for sure. But this one I knew I wanted to, like my sights were set on this one. And then the other one that, the other reason that I really wanted this palette is this wine shade. I feel like wine shades, especially mattes, are so difficult. They end up looking patchy. They're dry. They're crusty. They're hard to work with. This one is a whole different story and I don't have one that works this amazing that is in that shade. Look how pretty and these two pair so, so nicely together. So this was a $25 palette. I did pick mine up at Ulta and used a $3.50 coupon. It came to like $21.50 and I am mind blown that this was so good for the price that it is. Let me give you one more swatch. Um, let's do one of these like diamond type shades. I feel like now I associate these with the Jaclyn Hill palette. So, so pretty you guys. And I, I can't tell you how much I love it. It's, ugh, it's so, so good. Like I'm just going to go out on a limb and tell you that probably for all of the palettes that I picked up in June, I think this one is my favorite. And when you see my next couple of purchases, you're going to be like, oh my gosh, a $20 palette this is your favorite over those. Yes, it's it's amazing. I can't say enough about it. So if you're kind of leery about Morphe palettes or just Morphe in general, this one is a good one. Get it at Ulta though. <laughs> All right, so we've got three more to go. So the next one is one that I think a ton of us picked up and it is the Natasha Denona bronze palette. I have already done a Dazzled or Disappointed on it, so not much to go into here. I would rather you go watch that detailed review so that you can get like the whole experience, like the swatches and the demo and all of that stuff, um, go into thoughts like super detailed over there. But overall, I love this palette. This one's amazing. This is summer in an eyeshadow palette, but in a very classy way. I love this eyeshadow palette. Like the first time I opened it, when it came in, I was like, Wow, you know when certain things, you see certain makeup products, you first open it and you're kind of not exactly sure what it's going to look like in real life because those stock photos can be totally different and you open it up and you're like, this was a good purchase. <laughs> That's what I felt like when I opened it. it. The sparkle in some of these just was, I, I was very happy. <laughs> I was very happy. And I love being able to look forward to new releases like this because especially in the times we're living right now, you need something to look forward to. Everything looks very bleak and very dreary. And so something very happy like this is perfect. Just, I can't, what can't I say about this palette? The mattes are amazing. They blend just as you would expect a Natasha Denona matte eyeshadow to blend. Consistency on par. I love Natasha Denona mattes way more than I love Pat McGrath matte. Pat McGrath mattes don't come for me on that. Um, but just super silky, smooth, easy to blend, easy to build up. And these are the perfect summer shades. I put this on the first time and I was like, I wish I were at the beach right now. <laughs> so, so pretty. Let's see. Let me give you one more. Let me give you a standout shade on here. But 
so so beautiful i love this palette it is one of her smaller 65 dollars ones so it's definitely more achievable um and i am very happy i picked it up i like it more than the love palette from february i very much love that one i love the love palette i wasn't dazzled by it this one whole different story absolutely love the last thing i'll tell you before moving on is that this one does have one of those cream to powder formulas the same that you will find like in the cranberry palette um but a lot of people don't like that formula some people do i'm one of the ones that love it so anyways this dark shade right here it's the thing about this one is harder to work with because deep shades for me are already hard to work with because I can end up ruining a look real quick with a very deep shade. Some people have the talent and the knack for just blending and building and making it look so smoky and good. And for me, I go ham and I'm like, mm, I, also looks like a, I look like a raccoon or like someone just punched me in the eye or something. Anyways, but this is that cream to powder formula. It's the only one of its type in this palette. And then it does have one of those, what I call like topper shades that Natasha Denona likes to put in every single one of her palettes. Thankfully, this only had one and it's this one. The reason I say this is not my favorite is because just like I mentioned in the other, for the other palette, those topper shades that can't walk that fine line of doing double duty, of going on top of a shade or working on their own, I'm not a fan. So anyways, this is one of them. Ends up looking really thin, but it does have a peachy type. It's the one all the way up here does have a peachy type of tint to it just not my favorite formula that's okay though because this thing is incredible so two more this palette is one I said I was not gonna pick up I ended up picking up because the whole FOMO thing when I saw that it was sold out and sold out for so long I was like I, th I think I need that palette anyways I had gone in store um, to do a couple of returns for things I had bought during the sale I got in wrong shades all of that and they ended up having this one and it's the artist couture supreme nudes i know i'm not the queen of nudes i'm the queen of brights neons all of that stuff so nudes to me get shoved to the side however if it's a good nude palette i like it and i like to own it and uh this this lived up to the hype i had heard so i'm actually very glad that i picked it up it is very sleek just as sleek as everybody had said i thought it was going to be really bulky and blocky and boxy and all of that it's not very rounded edges, very sleek, very elegant, very pretty. Um, I haven't even taken the film off of the mirror, but it does come with a very generous size mirror. And this is what it looks like. I will 1000% tell you the pictures online do nothing for it. I was so bored out of my mind by looking at this palette online that I, that's why I was like, mm -mm, no. But of course, then I got intrigued with it being so sold out. And once the ladies, because you can't swatch anything in store right now. Um, so when the ladies opened it up for me to just look at it, I was like, mm, yeah, see, here's the thing. I think I need it. <laughs> Anyways, I'm a sucker for olive shades. There's an olive shade in here. And then there's a couple of really great standout shades, copper and a gold. This brown bronzy one. I mean, I feel like I have those over and over. But no, just overall, so, so pretty. The quality is great. I've seen a lot of mixed reviews on Sephora's site about like the quality and it lasting and just in general, you know how people people are, you know, we're all different and something that works for me may not work for the next person. So anyways, there was a whole lot of a mixed bag that I thought, hmm, but I found this to be very, very positive experience and I am glad that I picked it up. Very glad. And I thought the price point was really decent. I think it was like $40. Anyways, so that didn't swatch, that matte didn't swatch. Amazing, but super easy to work with on the eyes. I have to tell you, this is one of those cases where a swatch can't tell the whole story. And I'm so glad I picked this up. So if you have a chance to kind of take a look at this, I definitely give it a look. Don't pass it by if you have in the past, because it might very well be worth your time. Okay. Lastly, I picked up the Pat McGrath Divine Rose 2. So the Divine Rose 1, never it didn't call my name. I bought it anyways, totally regretted it. Anyways, ended up selling it on Poshmark. I was like, I'm not going to end up using this thing. The two, however, when I saw the promo pics, I was like, I have my sights set on you. <laughs> and I am so glad I did, you guys. Okay, so I know I told you the Maddie Ziegler would have been my number one purchase for the month of June. This would have been number two. And quite frankly, this is now my number one favorite palette out of my Pat McGrath collection. And if you've watched my ranking, then you know that I've got the 
um, Midnight Sun and Bronze Ambition as my top two. Uh, I don't remember if in that order. Bronze Ambition, Midnight Sun? Anyways, so I can't remember. But anyways, um, those two are my favorites. They are so good. But this one, this one's even better, if that's even possible. So we'll tell you, every time I order a Pat McGrath palette, when they ship it, you know how there's that space in there and it goes sliding? My ends always come completely torn and ripped, and it is what it is. This one was no exception, but it's okay. And I do keep those cardboard outers because the artwork is really stunning. Um, but let me kind of show you what I mean. And if you've seen my review, you already know this, but do you see how completely ripped it is here? And it's not like I can just, maybe I could, I know one of y'all said you taped yours. I think I might, I don't know if I want to tape it or I don't know what I want to do to kind of bend that a little bit. But anyways, that is what it is. I did pick up I pick mine up in the pink packaging. I was on there bright and early and I was like, I am going to fight for the pink packaging. It's beautiful, but once I saw someone put a video up of their Divine Rose 1 with the pink packaging, it was very different. It was like a, it wasn't a metallic type of finish and it was the perfect shade of pink. It was like a bubblegum baby pink type of shade and I was like, um, why couldn't have this one had that? But that's okay. I'm not complaining. It is still very lovely. Sorry. It's very reflective. So I'm trying not to blind you. I am notorious for doing that to you guys. And I apologize. This thing is so incredible. And um, I can't speak its praises enough. This is a $125 price tag, total worth it type of purchase. This shade right here is the one that shows on all the stock photos as being like a heavy green you really have to turn it the right way for it to look like that. Because literally, if I'm looking at it like this down this way, it looks green. But I, on camera, have not been able to get it to shift green. It looks, well, I guess like that you can. I find it to shift mostly pink. But yes, it has an incredible strong shift. And it is very, very pretty. This pink is so, so nice. It is very soft, though. I've had a couple of mishaps gouging my brush in there and it is incredibly soft. Be careful if you have this or if you're going to order it. And then of course, her standout shades, they're worth the one. They're worth the money, man. When I tell you the Natasha Denona mattes, I prefer those over these. That is totally true. I pretty much don't use the mattes that come in these palettes. Um they're just I'm just not a fan. They're usually re not repeat shades, but they look similar. It's always like a dark brown or anyways, this palette was the first time I was incredibly happy with the mattes because they weren't those deep, dingy shades. They're perfect, just perfect shades. This was the first time that they're like actually softer. Don't get me wrong. I still prefer Natasha Denona, but um, as far as mattes go. But these are the two mattes it comes with. And it's very different from, we, from what you're used to seeing in a Pat McGrath palette for mattes. And it made me so, so happy. So pretty, look at these two. Oh my gosh, this palette is so amazing. Um, let me give you a swatch. You've already seen this time and time again. So I'm gonna give you a swatch of the pink right here. Again, I also have a um, review of this palette. So check that out if you're wanting. I'd rather you see like a really in-depth type of video with swatches and demo and all of that good stuff. Um, yeah, get, get the whole package, get the whole thing. Um, but just absolutely stunning. I am so, so happy with this purchase. I would, oh my gosh, look, I would, I would purchase it again in a heartbeat. It's stunning, incredible. And yeah, so I guess June saw my number one favorites out of two brands and that's Morphe and Pat McGrath. Love, love, love. Okay guys, that wraps up this, I'm sorry, very long <laughs> June eyeshadow palette extravaganza. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you had some fun just kind of sitting back, relaxing, and watching some eyeshadow palettes just kind of, you know, letting the world fade away and just kind of watching some makeup or just listening to me talk. All right, guys, with that being said, I'm going to leave you with a quick verse of the day. Okay, friends, today's verse comes from John 14, 27, and it says, do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. I wanted to give you this verse because I know right now there, we're just going through scary times all around. I mean, we are all in this same boat and a lot of us do have anxiety here and there. Some of us have anxiety all the time, but I just want you to know that regardless of the situation with Christ by your side, 
that anxiety can fade. Now, granted, it doesn't mean like for me, I don't live an anxiety free life, but the thing about it is I feel like we can build things up ourselves. And I've noticed that the moment I release it all to him, the moment I just let Christ take control, my, just my spirit becomes so soothed. Like the anxiety literally melts away. And I know that sounds almost impossible, especially if you do suffer from anxiety, if you're troubled, that like that verse said, if your heart is troubled, let him bear that burden for you. That is what the Bible says. He's our burden bearer if you will let him. So it is my prayer that if you don't already know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, not in an effort to shove anything down your throat, just in an effort to kindly and lovingly give you an invitation to come to know him as your Savior and your very best friend. And you that's the truly the most amazing choice you will make in this lifetime please know that I love you and that Jesus loves you no matter what part of life you're at I pray for you if you need anything from me if you need a listening ear if you need prayer please don't hesitate to reach out to me whether it be in the comments below or you can just pop on Instagram and send me a DM or an instant message whatever it's called um, sometimes I don't see them right away and I'm sorry sometimes it takes a few days for me to like see the notification but I do respond and um, it's my privilege to be able to have that interaction with you. All right, friends, thanks for stopping by and chatting some makeup with me today. I had a lot of fun and I will see you in the next one. Take care, guys. Bye.